Welcome back, everybody, and we are actually going to be able to cast an extra game today for the Dota Talk League because Group A went way ahead of schedule. I'm LD, I'm joined here by Merlini, and we are going to be casting an all-Malaysian affair for this best out of one. You're watching the group stages right now, and it's going to be MUFC. Well, three of their members, they haven't announced the full five-man roster yet, but it will be Winter captaining them, facing off against TK or Three Kingdoms, also from Malaysia. I know nothing about Ten them except seconds, that remaining. fact, so... With that being said, Merlini, Cottle was actually given away, Five and TK going to snap remaining. it up with the first pick. Mm -hmm. And it looks like Rubik and Queen of Pain response. And, I mean, two heroes that can burst the Keeper of the Light down pretty quickly. You can lift him and just scream, ult, get him out of the way right away. We'll have to see as far as the rest of TK's draft. There is that pesky Phantom Lancer in the pool. Winter knows what he's giving away here. He's apparently okay with it. Just feeling perhaps that they could just win this one through raw skill. I mean, we saw last game, Kodo Peel is not a guaranteed win. Although I think we'd both agree Dreams probably drafted a little greedily around that combo. But we will see if TK is going to go for it. I hope not, but I think they probably will. Yeah, I think this is a pretty solid opening by Winter. Rubik is one of the best supports in the game right now. Maybe outshadowed a little bit by Keeper of the Light, but definitely uh, on par with Shadow Demon. And Queen of Pain is, uh, I'd say, the best solo mid at the moment, aside from Nyx and Bat, who are almost always banned. And she can take on any melee hero, uh, including the ever-so-popular Magnetar. Yeah, I mean, we've seen that matchup a lot. We won't see it this game. It could be the Beastmaster mid for TK, or it could be their offlaner. I can't even remember the last time I saw an offlane Beastmaster. I think the last time I saw him played at all was in the G League when, well, LGD was running him as a solo mid for Shao Aid. You know, do it, going for that inner beast build, uh, just constantly remaining. pushing the lane, controlling the runes, then going for ganks once he hits level 6. We'll see how That's TK right. choose to play their Beastmaster, but they they passed over the, the, the Phantom Lancer here, and you got to assume that Ambiose are going to ban that, and probably two other carries in the second stage, as TK has their supports. They do need a solo, but like you said, the, the Batrider's ban, the Nyx's ban, the really broken, ultra-strong solos are already out of the pool. And we see some unusual picks here. Uh, we see Sand King picked up second pick by Three Kingdoms, and Enigma in response uh, by Winter. This is like a very early Enigma pick. He's fallen out of favor just because... RP is just like an awesome version of Black Hole. You don't have to channel it, and that's like the biggest deal. It's a little bit shorter cooldown. Uh, it does instant damage as opposed to damage over time, and uh, Mag's a little bit easier to lane than Enigma. But uh, he used to be really popular, and you can incorporate some like pretty cool um, strategies with Enigma. You can tank. Uh, you can have like a really aggressive triple lane if you want to tank the creeps behind the tower with Eidolons. Yeah, I mean, Enigma, a little bit more popular in Southeast Asia, but I think the the one that's just really regional here is the Sand King pick. This is a hero that we don't really see at all in Europe right now, but is extremely popular, especially in Southeast Asia. Also, the Chinese teams like to run it. IG was running a lot of Sand King in the G League in the group stages, as often that tri-lane support, either the 4 or the 5 position, running the aggressive triple lanes. And, well... We're going to see the Sand King picked up early here. So I think because it's Southeast Asia, not that unusual. But elsewhere in the world, you're absolutely right. Very unusual. And TK, the team with the Keeper of the Light, are the ones to ban the PL. And Winter is probably thinking, well, thanks. You just saved me a ban. So <laughs> what am I going to do with this one? I like Three Kingdoms lineup right now. It's, uh, Sand King and Beastmaster usually tends uh, for a lot of aggression. And I love seeing that out of teams. Uh, Rubik and Sand King are actually pretty popular picks because of their very low remaining. cast time. Uh, if you want to disable someone with a blink, it's very, very important to have that low cast time. Uh, compare that to someone like Lina or Leshrac or even Magnetar who has that split second in his RP. Sometimes you can get away with a blink, uh, but a Queen of Pain is not going to be able to blink away from a good Sand King because of that instant cast time on his Burrow Strike. Yeah, and I mean, like you said, they have the lockdown between Burrow Strike and Roar. If they get any sort of damage, they should be able to bring him down fairly easily. And now I'm really curious what their carry is going to be. It will be the Life Stealer, so this could be an aggressive tri lane if they want to do it. And there is an Enigma in the game. Now, for MUFC, something they could run is the off lane. I'm not convinced it will be... Uh, and I, th I think it's Wayne Wayne who plays the Enigma for them, so we'll see. It could be a solo for them. It's not necessarily a jungler and. That would leave them with a potential tri-lane of their own. The question then is, 
who's going to be in that tri lane? They don't have a carry yet. They don't have that second support. So we're going to find out Ten right about now remaining. who that will be. Looks like Three King is picking all the like the yellowish looking heroes. Remaining. Team Yellow. Okay, Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what's M MFC. No theme for them. They lose style points already. Weaver. They do have the glowing eyes on two of their heroes. Weaver the choice. They have three blue heroes. <laughs> yeah, but they're like different shades of blue. These guys, like they're trying to color coordinate, but they are not doing it correctly. Yeah, three kingdoms, like most yellows, like yellowish orange, yellow with some red. Random it's like yellow shadow with some fiend. red, and then <laughs> shadow fiend. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, so, I mean, look at this lineup for Three Kingdoms. I mean, they have some sick mid game here with Life Stealer. Get uh, all these carries, of course, getting the Inner Beast Star, getting the additional minus armor from the Shadow Ten Fiend. Seconds, they have a minute. strong tri lane. They can run that. I imagine the Shadow Fiend will go. Five seconds, I'm not sure minute. where he'll go. Actually, will he go safe lane? Will he go mid? Uh, Beastmaster is the other solo. Lots of lockdown. Five lots seconds. of AOE. Not overly farm dependent because Life Stealer and Shadow Fiend don't need that many Ten items to get seconds. going. Uh, we'll have to see, but I think TK's lineup is pretty strong in the mid game, and same for same now is true for MUFC as they're gonna finish the lineup off with a puck. So looks like it will be a jungle enigma, and just playing the Weaver is that carry. Yep, looks like both teams have like a little bit of everything: a little bit of late game, a lot of AOE, a little bit of team fight, a little bit of late game. So very balanced lineup from both teams. <laughs> I hear Shadow Feed laughing a little bit now. I think that was the Shadow Feed anyway. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> so it's going to be, let's see, FCFC the Weaver. He normally goes mid, although I imagine this game it will be the Quap. We'll have to see, though. We'll find out how they're going to lane it. But, I mean, you look at this orange lineup. Uh, or not this orange lineup. This MU I'm thinking Winter. I'm thinking Orange. But, of course, this MUFC lineup. And, no, Winter actually back on his old team. He's going to be playing for MUFC. He is the captain. He's playing the Rubik. Observer's picked up for him. We have TFG, or 2 effing good, playing that puck. Wang Wang, gonna be on the Enigma, will be headed to the jungle, has five clarities off the bat. Contrast player, has the early rate of protection, so most likely, looking like he's gonna be the safe lane farmer. So they're running Queen of Pain on the safe lane, they're gonna run the puck as the solo mid, who is rushing a bottle, and then they're gonna run the Weaver on the bottom lane. So something MFC did before in the GST Dota 2, running two, three strong split pushing semi carries, no hard carry for them, but just out farming their opponents uh, and slowly but surely starving them to death. Let's see if they can do it here, and well, let's see who's on the side of TK. So it looks like TK, King of Fighter on Beastmaster, uh, does not look like he's headed middle because Shadow Fiend, uh, who Lance is on there, is already in the middle lane. Uh, Markel is on Sand King, Ultraman, Keeper of the Light, and DDZ is on the Life Stealer. So I, I assume they'll go aggressive here, right? Uh, it should be an aggressive lane, but Beastmaster doesn't fare too poorly in the off lane either. I guess I guess the issue is like, can you, if you look at MUC's lineup, like any of those three cores, the Queen of Pain, the Puck, the Weaver, maybe the Weaver, you, or or maybe the Puck you can kill if you just catch him with Burrow Strike, Full Charge, Illuminate. But I mean, all these three hairs are so elusive, so it really neuters your ability to go aggressive, and. I'm wondering if TK may just say, screw it, we're just going to run on a defensive tri lane, stack H's with the Beastmaster, and, you know, pretty much give up that off lane. Yeah, it's really, really important for this Life Stealer to pick up a Stout Shield. There are five range heroes on Dire right now, so whatever lane he's going to be in, he's going to be up first at least one range hero. And especially if he's up against the tri lane, he's going to be harassed to oblivion, especially if he does not get a Stout Shield. Yeah, I'm curious as well. Well, and it, for me, it looks like MUC is probably expecting... Well, I guess either way. Like, if you look at these lanes, Shadow Fiend's probably going mid just because, you know, it's a little bit of a safer lane. He's not going to overextend and get chased down by here like Weaver. He won't have to deal with a Quap or a Puck uh, in, a, in a lane that's pretty much stretched out. And, you know, he'll have that close distance to the tower, can bottle Chrome more easily, can farm that small camp, of course, on the beat on the Radiant side, stack it and get a lot of extra last hits and souls that way. And then I guess the question is, um, is TK kind of missing out on like the really the strength of their lineup, which is their ability to just find kills and constantly pressure that off lane? We'll have to see. I feel like this Weaver pick is going to work no matter what, though. I mean, even if he's in this off lane against the tri lane, 
they're probably not killing him. I mean, you could illuminate, open wounds him, you could burrow strike him, but he should just be able to Sakuchi away if he plays it correctly. And you're not killing the Weaver, then you're getting free farm on the Quap if they abandon the off lane. I feel like no matter how this is laned, MVFC is going to get at least one, probably two of their carries, some pretty solid farm. And on top of that, they have the Enigma in the jungle, so... I feel like MUC is going to have a pretty strong laning stage. Right, I agree with that. One of the problems with Sanking is he can't really zone out a hero by himself, especially an elusive one like Weaver. Uh, some of the other ones can, like Shadow Demon. They're pretty good at uh, keeping heroes out of the lane, but Sanking, he doesn't have any range. His nuke is, or his nuke and slash stun is like very short range as well, and he just doesn't have that uh, zoning capability that a lot of the other supports have. Yeah, they do have a smoke up on the Sand King, but I mean, to sort of piggyback off your point, not only can he zone other heroes out, he really needs someone else to initiate in most cases, unless, I mean, look at the initiation range on Burrow Strike, it's just abysmal at level 1. And Keeper of the Light, not really the best ganking hero, so I'm quite curious about the smoke, maybe we'll even see the lifesteal leave the lane at some point, and potentially like the Keeper of the Light just sit in farm lane. We'll have to find out. They are headed towards the bottom rune, so they are going to be abandoning the off lane. Looks like Beastmaster... Uh, well, is he going to be doing some mid pulls? Yeah, really hard to do now since the new patch and highly creep dependent, but it looks like he's just chilling mid. And I mean, what is this Beastmaster up to? He's got a stout shield. Is he jungling? The battle begins. Um, probably there's just no way he can stay up in that lane on top. Yeah, I mean, Queen of Pain's going to have give him enough trouble as it is, and especially with the Rubik support, and now that he picked up a DD, there's just no way. <laughs> they don't have any wards, but it looks like he is going to be abandoning that lane. So maybe doing just some stacking and farming the creeps with axes. They do have Keeper Light and Beastmaster, so together these two can jungle quite efficiently as a duo. That does leave only Sand King and Leicester bottom, though. And like you said, the Sand King can't really zone out the, the Weaver. So if they leave it this way, Weaver's going to have a good time. Sure, you're getting some jungle, but they have an Enigma to compensate for that. Winter's going in mid. Wants to keep the pressure up on Lance early. He will be spotted as it is daytime, but still quite annoying. Yep, and it looks like uh, there are no wards set up on bottom, so the supports on TK are going to get some farm. He's already pulling the first wave over here. Weaver may look to jack these, though. We'll have to see. Can trade hits okay with supports? Much better once he gets a point into Gemini attack. Looking to steal those neutrals, not doing so just yet. So, interesting lane, both teams playing very defensively. Like, Weaver's running around the enemy jungle, not really going for kills. And Winter may look to go back in here mid, is going to ward off the enemy. Oh, he's expecting the Beastmaster to be pulling Ancients, but it looks like he's not. Winter says, I wonder where he is. And in fact, we found him. He's at the small camp. So we see Weaver do like a little bit of uh, creep redirection over here. He like baited the um, melee creep to go up over here. So now that uh, this wave will be at the tower and he should be able to get some experience pretty soon. But Lance under continual pressure by Winter. Yeah, I mean, he's either checking the Ancients, he's putting pressure on that mid lane to sl show down, slow down the Shadow Fiend, and it's a big deficit now for Lance. He's 1-0. and oh. Puck is 9-6, and six, so... You talked about the importance of those first three levels for Shadowfiend last game. This is about as bad of a start as you can expect. Sure, he hasn't died, he hasn't been harassed, but the last hits are just not coming for him, and TFG making it even harder, getting tons of denies, tons of last hits as we progress. Yep, so as it stands right now, it looks like uh, Dyer is winning two out of the three lanes. Queen of Pain is getting free farm talk, Enigma getting free farm in the jungle, and Puck has massive amounts of CS in the middle. And Weaver's going to get a haste to her bottom. He'll get some levels off of this lane. And on top of that, they're running a jungle Enigma. I expect a huge lead, and yeah, for this early, 750 gold, 750, or maybe 600 experience. That is a really big lead to be two and a half minutes in and not actually have a first blood or anything like that, or tower kill. Puck actually jumps in mid, wanted to go on Lance, uh, not doing so yet. Lance just really struggling for these last hits. I would like to see him just start raising for some last hits, because he'll have his bottle, bottle soon. Finally, oh, he there will goes. Start. Yeah, on, so Beastmaster on decided to pick up an early set of boots and is trying to pick up some experience in top lane, but Rubik uh, getting a very nice creep pull. He should be level 3 off this unless he jacks him with the axes. Yeah, he might try to, but like you said, Queen of Pain can really make his life hell. Blinks it. There's your Shadow Strike and your lift, and this looks to be our first blood. No TP on the Beastmaster. Your boots won't save you now, sir. Down he will go, and the kill goes to Haunt Trash Player. I mean, that's just as easy as it gets. And like you said, Beastmaster just can't lane here. And he had boots, too. Just doesn't matter. Yeah, it's a little bit too late when the Queen of Pain is level 4 and he's just level 1. 
Weaver jumps in mid. They're going to go on Lance. This roaming Weaver feels like a bounty hunter. Will actually secure the kill there. Gets the kill as well. Up to 600 gold. Everything just really going MUFC's way. I shouldn't have shown the graph. Pretend you never saw that, guys. This is actually a dead even game. Your eyes are not back to see you. So what do you do right now if you're TK? I mean, you have a really strong mid game, but your Shadow Fiend isn't farming. Your Beastmaster's not leveling. Can you, I mean, they, can you they, win they, in they the mid game? Need, they need, um, I think Sand King needs to like babysit the uh, Shadow Fiend mid, just like the Rubik was babysitting the Puck for a little bit. And we haven't really seen him do anything. Uh, Keeper of the Light can take out stacks by uh, himself as well as like with Beastmaster right now because he's pretty much just forced out of top But they don't really need three people jungling and taking out this one creep sack right now And I mean Like Beastmaster's not gonna do anything if they go on your Shadow Fiend mid. That's sort of the other issue. Top lane uh, Oh, no, sorry bottom lane. Lysto actually gets a solo kill on the Weaver uh, I don't know the Lysto's phase boots. I guess just ran the Weaver down after Sakuchi. It does have a long cooldown at the early levels, but Still something you really don't ever expect to see happen. A solo kill from a Weaver, uh, from a Lifestar. Didn't even use Infest for that one. Yeah, nice pickup there by the Life Sealer. Maybe you can get snowballing a little bit. Enigma's already level 5, has the Soul Ring, the pressuring top. Queen of Pain has her ult, has not skilled it yet. Beastmaster's got to be careful. A blink into a Shadow Strike into a Malefice will probably kill him, but right now they're content to work on the tower while FCFC is hunting in the enemy jungle. Tower continues to be pressured. Down it will go. So easy tier Radiant's one, and it looks like they want to go too. Fallen. There's your Malphys. Blink into the Shadow Strike, still diving this right now. Meanwhile, Weaver's rotating towards mid. They're not going to commit though. No, here we go mid. On to the Shadow Fiend. They have no Dream Coil. Maybe going a little bit early. The Orb's not going to hit either. The bugs are there. The Sand King is here. Weaver's going to die again just after dying solo to the Lifestar. Now wanding up. Oh my goodness, MUFC, you have seriously overextended. Just feeding away two kills mid. Nice movement by the Sand King was in position like you were hoping for, and the Weaver pays. Bottom tower is yep, it looks like uh, they want to get a T2 out of it. Uh, T2's at 750 HP, just a little bit below 50%. Glyph still two, uh, four minutes for the Radiant side, and it looks like it is going to go down unless they get a nice Cauto Blast. But he is out of mana, he's Chakras, he's charging up a Blast right now. The push will die. Nope, oh, actually, didn't catch the Eidolons, but they'll go down anyway. This is the tower. Mid lane, Puck may die. Burrow Strike is not here. There's no mana for it, but just auto attacks after the haste room might be enough to bring him down. There's your Dream Coil. Now gonna go inside of the Sandstorm. Puck orbs back towards mid. Lance. Oh, not quite what enough. What a phase shift. Just phase shifts that raise. Close call. But now they're actually finding some farm for the Shadow Fiend, which is really, really important for them. And the Life Stealer is the lead farmer right now. Face boots up. Uh, not the lead CS -er, because there is a ta or, or gold or net worth because Han Trash player did get uh, the tower gold Dyer's from that tower top, tower. but Life Stealer is actually out CSing him right now by nine. That's a pretty big lead. Mm, looks like he's playing very aggressively on FCFZ right now. You know, it's a matchup where Life Stealer usually can't kill the Weaver. I mean, we saw the death there, but that generally doesn't and shouldn't happen. Still, once you have phase boots, you just walk in and you hit him once. He loses like, I don't know, a sixth of his health, something like that. It's like a truck. So Keeper really trying to get us some wars out right now. They, if you look at the vision right now, it's just completely dark for uh, TK. He sets up a ward and a sentry immediately after. They really need to protect the Shadow Fiend right now. Sand King is hovering around middle right now, and Ultraman uh, probably needs to buy another set of ops so he can protect the Shadow Fiend even better. Maybe like a ward over here or here to see this rotation from uh, the two supports on top. We see Enigma and Rubik coming down. Rotate into the lane. They do have level 6 up on the Enigma. Lance is in the river. Too far away for support to help him. Now thrown back up onto the cliff. Now he's really too far away. And down he will go. Just really overextended. Sure, you've got all these supports mid, but you step up to here in the river, and there's just no saving you. Yeah, you really need, like, a vision in this oh, area. Oh, they go in with the Burrow Strike after the Illuminate. Bring down the Puck. And the axes. Wang Wang drops low. An additional Illuminate to be channeled. He snipes him, but oh, it's not so enough. Down to 10 HP. Winter gonna get burrowed. Down he'll go. This Sand King is really making things happen. Lifestar continues to farm. The Shadow Fiend dies, but they do get the trade. 
I mean, yep, he sees a nice movement from Sanking now. He was just like sitting in the jungle and he's like, man, I gotta really help my team out. And he's just really turned the game around for TK. Oh, he could go in bottom right now. Weaver just, oh, actually, no, there's a time lapse. But there's your burrow strike. Can they bring him down? They get another kill. It's like he just pressed a button, turned it on. Black hole used at the tower. Leicester hasn't fast, can't get it off. Down will go. Tower not denied at least. But the Sand King thrown back. Wallby Malefice can burrow forward. He's trying to run. He cannot escape. At least they get the tower, but in a very expensive one at that. And a burrow strike steal by Winter. That's actually pretty big for Rubik when he gets a burrow strike like that, especially level 4. Oh my god. Yeah, level 4 burrow strike. I think this is actually the best non ultimate in the game for Sand King, or for Rubik. It's up there. It is one of the strongest. Yeah, it is steal. ridiculously good. Especially with their team, because they're a bit lacking on. You know, just like a big AoE stun. Dyer's sure, they've got the, the Enigma ult, but that's a really long cooldown. So with this and Dream Coil, as well as all the Pucks and Queen of Pain's other nukes, if TK ever group up and get caught, they could easily get five-man wiped. Yep, so they're looking to take out the second T1 tower right now. Enigma and Queen of Pain push it, putting out pressure on the bottom, but Nakes just, t just does TP in. And we see ultimate or pick up on the Queen of Pain. Looks like rushing that Scythe of Ice this game. I could be a Lincoln Sphere, but I imagine... Actually, Lincoln's would be decent because there is Roar, there is Burrow Strike, but I imagine it'll be an early Scythe of Ice there on the back lines. A Wild Keeper of the Light appears, burrowed by Winter, then screamed, and that's all she wrote. That Burrow Strike already paying off. A Beastmaster trying to get his level 6 up top. He is 5.5 right now. Gold only favoring the Dire by about 500. MFC is barely ahead in that. Only a thousand had experience, but it feels like a lot more just because their lineup is so strong at this stage of the game. And they're about to get some core items. The mech is coming out soon on the Enigma. The Queen of Pain already is the ultimate orb up. And even, I mean, the Weaver is the really poor one, but just throwing out the Swarm is not too bad for him. And here we go again. They want to start a fight here towards the Enigma. He's hasted, but he may have just overextended. If he gets open wounds, he will almost certainly die. He will be open wounds. Can Winter burrow in? He doesn't have Monitor burrow, so they're going to start on Wayne Wayne. He's dropping pretty low. Epi being channeled. Everybody's going to disperse, but will it be in the time? Hontrash player blinks north into a Queen of Pain ult. Backstab from Hontrash player. Massive damage. Now the Lyster pops out, but he's trapped in the trees. He'll be brought down. Five ranged heroes just picking away at them. And no Beastmaster in that fight, as he only just hit level 6. Wow, that was a ridiculously good Queen of Pain ultimate from Han Trash Blair. Yeah, I mean, just drink, blinked past their entire team, turns around, and just nails, what was that, four heroes with the ult? Three? I guess three, because the Lifestar was infested inside of Sand King. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. And that Man, was that without Winter Burrow tower. striking. I mean, he didn't even have mana for it. Right. That was painful. So hopefully this Beastmaster Primal Roar can turn things around. Oh, I, they should have gone on Puck there. They had the Roar. Shadowfee was in position with level 4 raises, but they just play it scared, I guess, and miss a kill. So we see some aggressive wars set up, and they will spot the Sankey. Let's see how they react. Mm, waiting for it. Wayne Wayne's running. Winter's running. Okay, we're going to TP away. Yep, Winter Burrow Strike has expired. He did not die with it, and he just had it for the full duration of the spell steal. I mean, it's one of those spells that. Oh, mid lane Shadow Feet's gonna get caught. He'll be picked. He actually gets the kill. He gets a double. I really thought he's gonna get picked off. I even started to say he would, just because you see him go down to 10 <laughs> HP. You assume he's dead, but Roar was there. Illuminate now being channeled. The boar's gonna slow Wang Wang down. I gotta say, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm impressed by TK or just. Surprised that MUFC is having so much trouble with their really strong start, but TK on the back of some big burrow strikes, some clutch raises, and some overextensions from MUFC, barely behind at all, I feel, considering that they're down two towers. I mean, if you look at that, you take that out of the equation, uh, well, they're down one ta net tower, but still, I mean, they're barely behind in this game. Uh-oh, Sanke gets caught, bottom lane. There's your Malphus, there's a black hole. Will they use it to secure this kill? Not just yet. Lift to follow, Winter hoping to steal Burrow Strike. Will he be able to do so? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh no. Don't give it to him again. He burrows forward. He's looking for a zap. Markel's Juki of the Trees. Can't get away. No escape. Zap down. Should have just thrown his life away, but feeds a burrow strike as well to the cause for the greater good. Now Wang Wang eating some raises, trying to run. Has that mech? Should be okay. He'll back off. 
Winter wants to go back in. He's got Burrow Strike. He hasn't used it just yet. Eliminate being channeled. Winter looking for the two hero. Burrow nails it. Now the Enigma ult. Pops the Shadow Fiend like a pinata. Another kill though. Gonna go the other way. The Life Stealer's chopping. And I don't think they can kill this Life Stealer without all their AoE. He's getting pretty fat in spite of how things aren't going so well for them elsewhere on the map. But now a Blink Dagger for TFG. And Queen of Pain, Sight the Vice. Uh, actually not sure yet with the Void Stone he picked up, but I imagine it will be. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure it will be. Scythe Vice is very, very good for snakes if you aren't going to get an Orchid. Yeah, I'm actually a little surprised he didn't go Orchid, because... I mean, it'd be good against a lot of the heroes on this lineup, but... Well, we'll see. Obviously, Scythe the Vice is going to scale better, and he did have a really nice start. Yeah, it is nice to have some sort of HP. The Orchid doesn't give any HP at all. If you get Roared or Sand King Sun, you're most likely going to die, and you don't want to die as Queen of Pain. It's really important that she stays alive in team fights. That's that's actually a great point. And, well, continue to pressure the lane, so it, is, it seems like it's slowly developing into more of that split push game for MUFC, which I would imagine would favor them. They do have Keep of the Light on TK, though, so that helps to compensate. It's going to be a BKB for Shadow Feed. He's working on it, but mid lane, Lyster, it pops into the creep and fests back out. Now going to Rage, just terrified of Winter, who has that Burrow, and he's going to start with the lift. This should be a dead Beastmaster. Burrow through, Scream to follow, zapped him down, Blink in a Dream Pill, catches the Sand Cane, Illuminate, a beautiful Illuminate. Imagine if they had an additional Burrow there, but unfortunately, he was silenced, he was dead. Will there be a buyback? Queen of Pain diving, has the ult, looking to go. The ult will hit, even though he was pushed back by Blinding Light. Now the Puck jumps in, nice wand by Ultraman. There's only so much you could do when you're juking as a hero like Keeper of the Light, but this Gandalf has got some sick Nikes, I must say. <laughs> Almost got away. I mean, if only he had any mobility skills whatsoever, he definitely would have escaped. I feel like it's a waste put, putting this guy on Keeper of the Light, because he's been, he's been juking like a boss. Yeah, Nick's using that preemptive rage right there really cost him. They didn't have Black Hole on Enigma, and if he had that rage, he definitely could have picked off one of the supports, but without it off cooldown, uh, they were forced to retreat and just picked off 3 for 0 and a T1 tower. Pretty costly for TK. I suppose the good news is Shadow Fiend is getting close to his BKB. He is farming that up. No real pressure on him, but Sand King nowhere near a Blink Dagger. Beastmaster, not even that close to the mechanism. Lifestyle, that delays his armlet as well, so all in all, really costly fight. Mid lane, TFG has the Blink. No, really low on mana right now. Illuminate being channeled, they're gonna bring the tower down soon. The fight may break out momentarily. Winter, no rage. Oh, doesn't have the Burrow Strike right now. We'll steal Rage. Now the Lifestyle are forced to run away. The Roar goes out of the Weaver, but no follow up. The Illuminate, there's your follow up, but it's not enough. Now onto the Keeper of the Light. Oh, sorry, that wasn't Rage. That was actually Open Wounds. Steals it, and then will be able to use it against him. Now the Beast Fest is gonna get picked off. Some really questionable focus fire from TK in this fight. A Burrow from Markel, and is now, oh, almost gives up the Burrow Strike. Winter's probably yelling at his team, why did you kill him? I could have stolen that Dream Pull on the list there, but he will just rage and run away. Still, to what end? Meanwhile, the Shadow Fiend's actually farming the jungle. Really needs that BKB, but a lot of fights going in favor of MUC in short succession. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yep, indeed. You usually see like Nakes just go all up in their in the support's face, but after his rage is down, he just runs away really, really scared, even when Black Hole's off cooldown. They really need him to, you know, put a lot of pressure on these supports and force them to be out of position so they can just tank illuminates, uh, have a nice setup for SK stun, maybe get a nice roar off. I mean, it's like you said, it's not j it's it it almost doesn't matter if you die eventually as long as you draw enough focus fire for your Shadow Fiend, your Sand King to come in and do the real damage. I mean, they, they already have a good team for kind of cutting the life stealer, but when you're just running away, you're such a naturally tanky hero. It feels like a waste of his potential. Shadow Fiend also want to point out, he's going back for a Shadow Blade. He's picked up a Shadow Amulet, which is going to delay what... I mean, if he wanted to just rush a Shadow, a shadow Blade, he would have had it by now. Assuming he didn't die. Had the Ogre Club, but never really got pressured since he picked it up. So he's going Shadow Blade, but there's about to be a Hex on the... Uh, no, no Hex, actually. He went Lincoln, so they are going... Oh, wow. He did juke us. I really thought it would be a Hex, but this is a very fast Lincoln. I mean, this is like the ideal time to get it. Mm-hmm. And I guess there's just no killing this Queen of Pain now. Like, you can burn, you can mono leak her maybe, and then try and roar her, but... Good luck with that. Yep. Yeah. We'd really need a blink on the Sand King if they have... <laughs> if they want any hope of killing her, but she's a long ways away, it looks like. Unless it's on Chicken right now, which it is not. We see it instead an armlet on the Nyx. So he goes for the armlet. They've got some good fighting potential now. One Shadow Fiend... Finishes the Shadow Blade. Maybe they can at least find some assassinate kills 
Uh, FCFC is pushing the top lane. Wonder what he'll go for. Uh, I've seen him go for the split. I've seen them generally run the Weaver as a split pusher, and I mean that's what their lineup is really built for. Maybe the Mad style could be a, a Radiance, but it's a little. It might. It'd be pretty late at that, so we'll have to see what FCFC goes for here. Yeah, I think Lingus would be a pretty good choice for Weaver. It blocks Roar. That's like the main thing that he has to worry about in this game. So we see uh, MUFC taking out Roshan right now. Yeah, I, there's no way for TK to contest this. They are totally blind right now. Look at the map for... This is just brutal. Look at the map right now for MUFC. I mean, the vision for them, they see everything. And T TK sees absolutely nothing. Yep, and Beastmaster tries to smoke and pick off a kill, but his duration is about to wear off. And meanwhile... Meanwhile, the blink silence was there. The burrow strike comes in. Lysteer gets inside of a creep, and the black hole. What was Wang Wei doing there? He tried to black hole his own creeps from the looks of it. Maybe thought he could just catch the Sand King, but not gonna catch him at all. Still, they pick up the kill. Han Trash player, tanky, has the Aegis. Still, the Lysteer's life needs to arm the toggle. Cannot do so. Gets silenced. Instantly burst down on the back line. It's an Illuminate. The burrow was stolen yet again from Winter. He will go down, but they want the Shadow Feed. He's got the Shadow Blade, but it's cooling down. He's got 50 wand charges. Needs to pop them now. Bands up, throws the raises, and explodes for his trouble. Well, that that black hole probably deserves some Benny Hill music, but nonetheless, they get the kill. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. That was a PGG black hole. I mean, goodness gracious. <laughs> I don't really know what he was trying to do there, even if it was like his own, or the enemy's creeps, I mean... Do you really want to black hole those? <laughs> <laughs> uh, next level Dota. He just wanted the bait TK to fight. Like, oh, black hole's all cooled up, let's go, let's go, let's go! <laughs> now you're theory crafting. that's what I like to see. Han Trash player is going for an Orchid now, has the Oblivion staff up, I assume Orchid anyway. Uh, FCFZ has 3600 gold, what is he going for? Uh, it's, it seems like it'll be that relic. So pretty much whatever we call as an item selection, just think anything it's else, wrong. and you will, be, <laughs> yeah, and you'll be right on the mark. Does that mean Sage and Yasha on Shadow Feed? Maybe a Heaven's Halberd? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe an Aghanim Scepter? Who knows? It doesn't even work on him, but that 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 doesn't necessarily stop him from building it. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe not that. So they deny their own tier 2 top. top tower. I don't know, Merlini. This ain't looking good for TK. They had some really nice fights off the Sand King, but then five bad fights in yeah. a row happened. And by Orchid on Queen of Pain, you mean Refresher with that Oblivion staff, right? I was actually about to say that before I got sidetracked. <laughs> yeah, like... So we see a gem pick up on Winter, trying to just take down any sort of map vision and uh, kill that Beastmaster Hawk if it's just hiding somewhere. Yeah, Winter's really good about the early gem. I'm, to the point that people will flame him for talking about it too much in his casting, but... I mean, it is such an important item just to maintain the advantage once you have these early towers down. And Well, Winter ain't messing around. He wants to put all the nails in that coffin. And they're gonna go bottom on Lance in a second, I believe. They have detection, though. The only one century on Winter, so not gonna go. Yep, especially with the Shadow Blade on Shadow Fiend, I think it's a very, very good pickup. Yeah, we'll see... Oh, well, I was talking about Century Wars. He's got the gem. Oh, <laughs> uh, we see uh, Enigma. Enigma has Blink. Uh, I think Maybe he... no more PGG black holes. We'll have to see. Get the circus music ready just in case, guys. I want to queue it up in the background. Here comes the Illuminate from Ultraman. It's going to mow through the creeps. However, the tower will fall. Brought down by the puck. Now Dream Calls only catches the Beastmaster. Not really a great start to the fight. There is a Burrow Strike lurking on the high ground, but there's also a Winter oh. waiting to steal it. Steals the Burrow, immediately nails it. They bring down the Beastmaster, and now the Rack's potentially going to start taking some chip damage of additional Oblivion Staff and an Orchid. All right, first right item call of the game. We're on a roll, but they Woo. still lose a hero. <laughs> he roared right into that Lincoln, though. Radiance oh, did he really? Totally missed that. Yeah, not a good fight for them. And now with the Orchid up, it, even the Life Stealer can easily be brought down. Just Orchid him, uh, throw any sort of stuns on him, and just burst him down with that Queen of Panels. Under and the Radiance is now up for the Weaver. Dynasty if you want to run Split Push, probably the ideal items, things like Lincoln Sphere. Uh, we can even see Puck go for one, but I imagine with him, it should be a Scythe device. We'll see. Probably not since I said that. Uh, and, Scotty? Yeah. <laughs> Mad style? Next level puck. <laughs> Top lane, Lance is gonna get picked off, doesn't have the BKB, and will pay with his life. 
a heavy blow. And we still see one and a half minutes left on this Aegis. Let's see what they want to do. They could probably take out that mid towers. I don't really think that TK can fight them right now. Unless they just like straight up just tank and illuminate an epicenter combo without BKBs, but that's that's a long shot. Yeah, I'll He's... say. That's like a that's like a Hail Mary across two football fields. <laughs> 1,500 gold for Blink on Markel, unless he's going for Veil or something ridiculous. Yeah, he's probably going for, I don't know, a Mask of Madness or something, because <laughs> that'll help your mobility too. Queen of Pain's just been waiting to go for a solo killer with this Aegis forever in a day. Hot Trash player lurking on the high ground, but cannot find the opening. So instead, Dave will go back towards mid, continue farming, and... Well, the standoff continues. The Aegis is going to wear off in the midst of this fight, I think. Yeah, it's got like a minute left, maybe 30, 45 seconds. Mm. They should be able to take this and back off, I think. They still have everything, uh, all their ultimates up right now. And Winter still has Burrow Strike. That's pretty much the best spell for him to steal unless he wants to steal Roar. He's been baiting that Burrow Strike like an absolute champ, like just lurking on the high ground, lurking out of range. Just sitting there and waiting. Hot trash player. Oh god, he just don't expire now. Don't fail me now. I was gonna laugh so hard if it did, but I'm pretty sure they wrote down the time and it will wear off at the right moment. Now they lift in the life stealer, but there's no stun. Oh, there you go. The burrow strike. There's your silence from the puck, and now the orchid being applied as well. Easy kill on the life stealer as predicted. Now the epicenter for the sand cave. In comes an angry shadow fiend, but does finish the job. Didn't double raise there. Hot trash player jumps in. Roar has that not been used yet, neither wasted nor used at all, so in a sense has been wasted simply by not being used. There's your philosophy lesson for the day. And now they're going to siege the tower mid. Yep. So they still might ter uh, go in with Black Hole. Yeah, what are they going to do when the Snigma just mans up on them? <laughs> we'll have to see. I mean, what, probably the whole team will be silenced as the puck has got a blink dagger and there's an orchid on the field. Blinks in, drops the Orchid on the Sand King, easy kill. Uh, Wang Wang is just like, what am I supposed to do this game? Because my team's just killing everyone before I can even get into the fight. My trans player jumps in again, screams the Hawk, now the bugs to fly, and I think at long last, TK are probably getting rags. It feels like at long last, because, well, it's past 20 minutes. They have the Cauter Blast though. It's really hard to push against it. It looks like they will back off without that Aegis of the Immortal anymore. Time to go farm until they get the next one. Weaver, as mentioned, had the Radiance a while ago. Has the Power Treads up now. I think that's it for him. Uh, oh no, actually, Ogre Club. So going probably for probably for Heaven's Albert. <laughs> Why not? And FCFC getting that farm up. So they're going to have three cores who are all quite big. Puck, Scythe Device up on him. Just finished purchasing that. And MBC with the next Aegis, probably should be able to break the base. Just need a pipe, I guess, to be sure. And nobody can quite build one yet. Yeah, MUFC just has ridiculous mobility in team fights. Rubik 2100 gold probably has his blink. Quap has blink. Puck has illusory orb and phase. And Enigma has blink too. So like four of their heroes pretty much have blink and Weavers haste it half the time anyways. And it's just really easy for them to pick any one of TK's heroes off if they're out of position just slightly. And Winter is about to have a Blink Dagger of his own, and then we're going to see Blink Burrow Strikes from the Rubik, or Blink Lifts into Burrow Strikes. That's going to be their entire team with mobility. Blink Daggers, or some other pseudo Blink or Blink skill. And potentially a Divine Rapier for Hot Trash player. I really hope that's the choice. Could be the MKB, or the Daedalus, of course, but... Praying for that. Praying for Ooh, that. Ooh, I would like to see that Rapier. Yeah, that could throw get TK back in the game. If you give that to Shadowfeed, he's got his BKB now, and he's got Inner Beast. That might border on a throw, but they are 20k gold ahead, 20k experience ahead. So if there's ever a time to try to throw the game, now is that time. Weaver picks up Trez after the Radiance. I feel like, to be honest, Weaver doesn't need any items. He could just have, like, just, like, six branches, and they could still win at this point. They don't really need him for anything. You know, FCFC's role this game, if you've ever played a pub, I'm sure you have, just played a pub game where you have, like, that guy who picks the one extra carry you don't need, then dies, <laughs> then dies all game, and, like, your team is winning 4v5, and then you end up winning the game while he's still farming. I mention this because this just happened to me yesterday. Uh, PL with a, like, a 15-minute Midas, 30-minute Battle Fury, still farming, uh, or PA, rather, when the game was ending. So we'll see if FCFC is forced to basically be in that role on his team. Of course, it's for a good cause. 
And it's all part of the plan here, as opposed to pubs, where there is no plan. And they ping on Roshi, and it is up in 30 seconds, and MUFC just biding their time, waiting for that Aegis to finally push up that T3. Yeah, TFG gonna pick up a rune bottom. Roshan should be the next destination. Not going for it just yet. Now a quick disconnect. Killing me, home slice. Hontrash player heading back towards the base. I imagine this is not intentional, though. Beastmaster with a casual headrest, not even getting that mech. Uh, I, yeah, I guess he's going pipe. Mm -hmm. they, I mean, they do have a ton of magic damage. I think ton is an understatement, too. Yeah, I think metric fuck ton is my personal phrase to describe their <laughs> magic damage. Not really Twitch appropriate, but there you go. I hope all I hope all the kids haven't woken up yet. Sorry if I've offended anyone. So uh, I've actually seen like a fair amount of life sealers go Lincoln Sphere as like a counter to Orchid, uh, because there aren't that many like instant cast spells like shadow he can like shadow strike to try and pop the lincolns but he can always rage dodge it but that instant silence really just kills nix if you can't pop your rage you're gonna die almost all of the time and lincolns does help with that yeah I, I guess there's there are still other things i suppose like the blink silence for puck the blink bkb but you know even just farming anything right now it's gonna be a challenge for him javelin up you maybe get a yeah. basher, but that's probably You could just hard. go straight heart, too. Straight heart is a pretty common life sealer build, too. And you're just like, oh, well, if you want to silence me, you got to kill me in the silence or else I'm going to rage. And I have 3,000 HP. <laughs> I think you maybe slightly overestimated how much more farm DDZ is going to get this game, though. <laughs> we'll have to see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's a ways off whatever he wants. Could maybe get the vitality booster soon if he does want to go hard. But we imagine it will probably be the basher at this point. And unfortunately... No blink on the Sand King, no level 2 ult on the Sand King. I feel like TK is just a couple days late and a few dollars short right now. I mean, they actually, in the last hit and deny column, they're actually ahead. Like, Shadow Fiend has the most with almost 200. Queen of Pain uh, just barely behind with 183. And Life Sealer is next, but this tower count is just way too much in favor of MUFC right now. Six down already and about to be two Roshans. Yeah, two Roshans. The Blink is up on Winter. I think he picked that up a little while ago. So, a team with three Blinks, three Blink Daggers, as well as Puck Orb. So, that's four mobility skills right there. Plus Burrow Strike, which we can count as like four and a half. Then the Queen of Pain Blink, that's five and a half. Oh, and by the way, Sakuchi. So, we're looking at like six and a half, seven mobility skills uh, coming in the way of MUC since Winter's been stealing Burrow Strike basically every fight on command. That is going to be hard. Uh, TK can't afford to run, probably can't stand and fight, and probably going to lose their rack soon. After this pause, you can never fully count a team with Keeper of the Light out, at least as far as stalling the game goes, but, I mean, even that's going to be tough. Yeah, so this game and last game, we, we've seen, like, Shadow Fiends, they don't really have a good laning phase, and then it seems like the rest of the game, they're just trying to catch up and farm. And... Like, I think you really need, like, a strong early game hero um, just so you can put out pressure on the other lanes or else you're just going to be in a defensive position the whole entire game, which is what we've seen in this game and last. And the Shadow Fiend pick is just not working out at all. Yeah, I mean, it's he's really shifted to be more of a safe lane hero for a lot of teams. You don't actually see Shadow Fiend go mid much anymore. He used to in the old days, but that was before Smoke of Deceit was introduced and... In this particular version, people are so aggressive that running a Shadow Fiend mid is, if not impossible, then very, very difficult. Yeah, I think you definitely need some roamers and not, like, safe lane babysitters who continually pull the jungle because it is just very difficult for him to stay alive. He almost, like, dies to a Puck solo after one one death, and you really just can't let that first death happen. But it is really, really difficult to... Uh, for him not to have any deaths in like the first 10 minutes or so of the game. Wait, so are you telling me if you run three heroes in the jungle, it weakens your lanes, Merlini? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the hell is this voodoo magic? I thought more junglers equals more gold equals GG, we win. Apparently I haven't been trained very well. Yeah, it just seems like uh, both of these teams, they just like assume the Shadow Fiend is just okay on his own. And the other team are just like, we gotta kill the Shadow Fiend over and over and over. And they don't like expect it and plan, a, a plan ahead. 
plan ahead of time for that. Winter actually streams, and I, I was watching his stream for like 10 minutes yesterday. He happened to be playing a Sand King versus an enemy Shadow Fiend. And from the zero minute mark, he was just camping the runes, and like, he was actually talking to his viewers on the stream, and he said, gotta kill the Shadow Fiend, gotta keep the Shadow Fiend down. He killed the Shadow Fiend like four times in the first five minutes. Uh, so if you pick Shadow Fiend against Winter, uh, you can bet your bottom dollar. He's gonna try and gank you the entire game, and that's pretty much what we've seen. Yep, it might work in pubs, but not against smart players like MUFC. Well, Merlini, MUFC is looking pretty good. I think they had one of the weaker groups, I want to say. So they're probably going to be advancing. We're looking at first departure and Orange advanced out of the other group. I imagine Zenith has advanced as well at this point. Uh, so the team, the group sort of, or the playoffs start, sort of starting to take shape. Out of the teams we've seen so far, based on your limited information, how do you feel they compare? I mean, we saw Orange lose to first departure. Now we're seeing MUFC take down a pretty inferior opponent in TK, most likely. Uh, do you have a favorite as far as those sort of three top teams we've seen so far? I mean, uh, MUFC looks pretty solid in this. They haven't really lost uh, any team fights, and they have decent item choices, very good execution in their lanes, very good movement around the map uh, from Rubik, and they just completely shut up TK this game. But again, this is not like the best showcase because it doesn't seem like TK is one of the top tier teams. Uh, Orange also looks pretty strong. I uh, haven't seen the other teams, but I mean, it looks like anybody's game at this point. Yeah, speaking of that, guys, we have one more match coming up. Uh, or no, sorry, actually two more matches for the Dota Talk League after this. Uh, and then we'll be done with Dota Talk League for the day. We may cast some Star Ladder here. Uh, I think there's a Navi game later and potentially a few others. I think we'll get done just in time for the Navi game. We will see. Uh, but aside from that, we'll be done with the Dota Talk League for today. Then tomorrow, the quarterfinals are going to get played. We are finally ready to get back underway. The unpause will come out. Silence. And that roast that we were waiting for will be coming up in about 30 seconds to a minute. Then I imagine MUC is going to start that five-man death push mid. Yep, sounds about right. They're just clearing out this ancient stack really fast. Oh, they wait around 10 seconds for Roshan to respawn. I'm sure it's been written down to the second. Winter's already walking in the pit. Let's see if his time was accurate. Indeed it was. Right on cue, they arrive. Someone's been taking careful notes in class and into the Roche pit they'll go. BKB gonna come on Enigma, should have it after this Roche. The Queen of Pain could have her MKB. I mean, just like the perfect timing to go and end the game. All the additional luxury items about to come out for all their heroes. Yep. And I wonder what Weaver's going, 2100 in the bank, but again, he doesn't really need any items uh, for MUFC to do their death push at this point. Where's my Mask of Madness? I am disappointed, FCFC. You need move speed. Your hero is very slow. No, apparently he disagrees. So now, here comes the push mid. Two heroes actually bought him, so maybe just gonna split push till the bitter end. Shadow feed, Shadow Blade's in, but he's gotta remember there is a gem on the field. Nowhere is that safe. On Trash Player, up to 3.2k. It will be that Divine Rapier they did give him the Aegis. I think he really wants to farm it. Put on a show for the fans, Dave. You do it. Do it, sir. Do it. We'll have to see if he does. So, no uh, Blink on Sand King. They, I mean, if they had Blink on Sand King, they might have a chance of defending these T this T3 and maybe killing the Aegis. But without it, it's just going to be insanely difficult for them to defend. Yeah, I mean, the, I guess the other question is, like, who do you go on if you're up against in MUC right now? They have the Rubik, I guess he's the easiest one to kill, but Enigma's got a mech and a BKB, so you're probably not bursting him down. Obviously, Hauntrash player has a, a Lincolns and an Aegis, so you're probably not killing him. Weaver's kind of irrelevant. I mean, we mentioned it probably doesn't matter what items he has in Puck. Well, he's Puck, so if you don't burst him down, he's going to phase shift, he's going to blink away, he's going to orb out. There's just no obvious targets for MUFC, but they are still playing it very safely. Lurking up on the high ground, farming the enemy ancients. They must be waiting for a Divine Rapier or something. What is on the Courier? It's a, it's a Daedalus. Oh, come on, Han Trash player. Are you kidding me? What a disappointment. Alright, everyone please go into Dota 2 right now and report Han Trash player for being a boring... Noob Quap build. <laughs> noob Peter Quap, even though he's 10-1 and 9. No Divine? He's a noob. But, yeah, don't... Well, you can report him if you'd like, but don't tell him I told you to. They're pushing mid. Here we go. Here we go, Merlini. This could be the end. Illuminate being channeled. He's gonna bring down the creeps. On trash player, probably gonna siege. Nope. Get it back off. 
Weaver picks up another item, and it is a Black King bar. I mean, at this point, they could just push all three lanes right now. Like, it's really difficult for them to uh, kill all the hero kill any of the heroes, and they would have to blow multiple ultimates in order to kill them. No, they could just barrel down the front door. They're gonna do that with Winter starting oh, with the blink into the lift. Shadow Fiendal being channeled, unwinds, unleashes it. Nice burrow. They bring down Winter. A good illuminate to follow up. Black Hole only catches DDC. I mean, not a perfect fight, but about as good as you can expect from TK. And it don't matter. Three heroes dead. Blanket from the Quap. Hot Trash player once more will not get it. I assume they just focus the tower down. There is going to be Illuminate. Here we go. Ultraman channeling it up. Going to do some good damage. Not going to kill anyone, but will bring them fairly low. Queen of Pain jumps in. Spots him. Gets the set. Gets the kill. Big crits from Hot Trash player up to 19k net worth. One lane of Rex down. The rest should crumble. Like dominoes, they will all fall down. And this looks to be the end for TK. I mean, he doesn't even have to hold more than one person. He just holds an ace, and that's that. Yeah, and just busy critting away on the Keep of the Light at the enemy fountain. Nobody can stand against Han Trash player. He is stuffing them all into the dumpster right now. Comfortable win for MEFC, all things considered. And TK hanging out for dear life. Keeper of the Light has bought back, trying to spam Illuminate to prevent that second rest from being taken down. Yeah, the Illuminate's there. Nice face shift dodge. In comes Lance. Does some good damage if he actually gets the auto attacks off, but the face shift was there to allow them to dodge. A Queen of Pain's coming back, but there is no stun right now. How are you going to kill? How do you kill that which you cannot stun or that which you cannot see? Well, for Weaver, you just auto attack him. Apparently, that's the ticket. Winter's going to drop again. Man friend from the Shadow Fiend and the Queen of Pain, but the Shadow Fiend's winning, even though the Quap is probably like. Oh, yeah, it is like 10k net worth ahead. Wayway picks up a kill over towards the mid lane. Now in comes Han Trash player on a tear. Triple Ultra. Should be a rampage. Shadow if he wants to give him that rampage. Lance coming right back into the meat grinder. Uh, not going to go just yet. But two lanes of Rex down. If he had a rapier, he would have gotten a rampage. Yeah, just saying. You heard it here first. No rapier, no rampage. Merlini, how many rapiers have you bought on your stream? Oof, probably three or four. Yeah, something. you like never buy. I know. Fun I'm, not, I'm not the. I I did buy one yesterday, I believe. Bro. See, see, like you're a hypocrite. I mean, you're like, oh yeah, buy a rapier, but you won't do that. You want to win. Then, whereas with myself, I'm happy to throw the game and buy a rapier. <laughs> I frequently do that. But, well, TK, they're fighting the bitter end, but that end is coming now. The Rex, the throne, nothing really left standing here between MUC and I imagine a first place seed in the group. Inflix Wang Wang, nice pro strike, catches out a few. Queen of Pain ult just delivered, and down goes the Beastmaster. On trash player getting muscled down, he will die. Buyback. No rapier, too bad. They could have used it. No buyback. The bash was there, like you said. Now on to Wang Wang, who should die as well. Four staffed away, will not matter. There's your buyback. <laughs> That's a team wipe, actually. That is a team wipe, ladies and gentlemen, going the way of TK. But MEFC can afford to throw a fight like that at this point. Who needs disables when you have Bash? I just... We should have seen this Basher more. There was one game where we didn't see the Basher, and that was one game too many for my tastes. Just too good <laughs> with Rage. It is way too good. So much lockdown. Just from right-clicking people. Yeah, and so much fun as well. Nothing's better than bashing. Wang Wang's gonna get potentially caught bottom lane, but could easily just turn around and kill the Shadow Fiend, who is instead just gonna safely farm some creeps. Lance gets Malphus. Black Hole should be coming in a few seconds. Not just yet. Drops, uh, drops that Midnight Pulse. Never remember the spell name of that skill. Lance is gonna die to that Black Hole. Almost kills Wang Wang with the ultimate, the Death Requiem. Not enough in the end. Surprisingly, this game is not over yet. Yep, Throne is slowly regenerating, or Radiance Ancient, rather, as they call it now. 1,550 HP. Yeah, I mean, they have only a 30k net worth advantage, so it's like basically a minimal advantage right now. Just barely ahead. <laughs> this is what you call being barely ahead in Dota 2. <laughs> oh boy. Not had enough for rapiers, apparently. Jesus. Not at all. I need like a chest full of rapiers to salve my wounded soul after this game. 
Oh, Clarky on the high ground, not gonna go just yet. Winter comes in. There's your rage. There's no open wounds, but the bashes could be here. Wang Wang, no bash. Oh, he's been. He needs to go play in Vegas right there. That's pretty lucky. Three auto attacks. Now the roar and FC. Some chitter chatter going on, but down the puck will go. The throne is slowly regenerating, like you said. Holding on for dear life right now. They have one set of wrecks right now, but Roshan does respawn in two and a half minutes. Yeah, two and a half minutes to go, then the Aegis, the Cheese, the MKB up on Han Trash player, who probably can three-shot almost everyone on the side of TK if he gets a crit or two in there. And now gonna blink on the high ground, go for the third lane. There is no glyph for a few minutes. There is Illuminate, but, well, Ultraman, you probably want to sit way back. Winter sieging mid, the two carry sieging bottom, no commitment just yet. And Wang Wang jungling, because he's got some more items he needs right now. It's not too late to throw. It's never too late to throw. I mean, if they all dive the fountain twice, and then nobody is buyback, then maybe TK can get a tier 1 mid. They accidentally pop their BKBs instead of their other items. Contrast it's players. Gonna be, it's gonna be a lot. <laughs> I'm just trying to think what else could drag this game out. I think maybe Winter's gonna need to- Oh, there's a blink! There's a blink on Sanking! Ooh, and level 2 ultimate. He's actually 13 now after a few good fights. Meanwhile, mid lane, top lane pushing in. Let's see if MFC commits to this fight. They will. Ghost Scepter's up on the Beastmaster. The pipe is there as well. He's not going to die quickly. Now the Burrow Strike, though, stolen by Winter. Lance is going to unload that ultimate. But unfortunately, the Epicenter just on a BKB Weaver. Absolutely nothing but the Bashes, I think, was what brought the Weaver down in the end. Now the Hex on the Markel. Blinking forward. Han Trash player with one crit takes away half his health. Now the Lifestealer on the run. The Keeper of the Light four stepped out of the Dream Coil into a stun, into a scream. Ultra for Han Trash player. Is he going to get that much? Fabled Rampage, he oh, will rampage for him. We lied about the no rapier, no rampage. Take it away, he didn't deserve that one, but he does get it in the end. And with that, 24, two and 10, TK are beat. Thoroughly, thoroughly beat. And the black hole on the ancient. <laughs> that was like the best black hole of this game because Wang Wang just got like two opportunities to black hole the entire game. Well, the second or third blessed one anyway. Unfortunately, guys, that is going to be a wrap for today. For this for this game, I should say. Not for today. Merlini is going to go get some much-deserved sleep as it is 11 a.m. And it's basically his bedtime now. So, Merlini, any yep. shout-outs? Any closing words? Uh, if you like what you heard, just follow me on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, whatever you'd like. Uh, slash Merlini Dota. And thanks for having me, LD. It was a pleasure. Always a pleasure to have you aboard, guys. Be sure to follow Merlini. He is a blast, as well as a really educational and entertaining streamer. Uh, so just want to echo what he said. Thank you all for tuning in. As for myself, I'm LD. If you enjoy my casting, be sure to follow me. Twitter.com slash LDDota. That is going to wrap it up for MUFC's match versus TK. We will be sticking with MUFC. They're going to move on to face another opponent next. That opponent will be... Ideal Esports, which is a team from Thailand. So stay tuned. Two more games coming up for the Dota Talk League. Thank you all for tuning in. More action after this.